Welcome back to NRA News Cam and Company. Dave Adams of the uh, Virginia Shooting Sports Association is with us on the program right now. How are you, Dave? I'm great, Cam. How about you? Excellent. Appreciate uh, you coming on the program. Uh, so Governor McAuliffe returned uh, an NRA-opposed amendment on uh, gun records legislation. What, what exactly does this mean, Dave? Um, Senate Bill 377 uh, was amended by the governor. Uh, it stripped out uh, language that was added by the House of Delegates that would ha- – let me give a little background on the bill. Sure. Um, Senator Bryce Reeves introduced a bill at the beginning of the session that would have required – uh, federally licensed firearm dealers that if they were um, taking a firearm in trade or transferring from a non-dealer a firearm that they had to do a uh, submit to a check through law enforcement to make sure the firearm was not lost or stolen. When Senate Courts of Justice heard the bill, they amended it to say that it gave an option for dealers to do that. When it got over to the House, the House also added a uh, section that said that if the firearm was determined not to be lost or stolen, that the consent form that had been signed by the individual trying to sell or trade the firearm had to be destroyed within two weeks. Governor McAuliffe stripped out that section of the bill as it passed, and now it uh, require, would require the dealer to keep the consent form for a year if it was determined to be lost, if the firearm was determined to be lost or stolen, and it has no provision for destruction of the consent form if it was not determined to have been lost or stolen. Okay, so, so what happened? Hap- backdoor registration. Yeah, so what happens now, Dave? Uh, the Senate will uh, come back for this reconvened session on April the 23rd, and the Senate has the option of accepting or uh, rejecting the amendment. If it is accepted by the Senate, then it goes to the House to be accepted or rejected. Um, if it's rejected by the Senate, it'll go back to the governor, and then he has the option of signing the bill as it was passed or vetoing the bill. Okay. Um, so, I mean, yeah, okay. So but, go ahead. Uh, well, so gun owners need to be making phone calls now because they've only got two weeks before the reconvened session and let their senator know that they oppose the amendment. Okay. Um, now, also, uh, Governor McAuliffe did sign uh, House Bill 752. This is, uh, it sounds like a, a, it's a zero tolerance uh, a, a law, uh, Dave, or at least a fix. Yeah, it, I, it was amended as it uh, was passed. It was a little bit stronger as it was originally um, introduced. The way it came out of both houses was it gives school boards options to not uh, use a zero tolerance policy in the case of an um, air gun. Um, I don't think it's strong enough, but I guess I'll take every, every little bit I can get and come back for, at a, for another bite of the apple next time. Right. Uh, I would have preferred something that said, no, you can't kick a kid out of school for life for an air gun on school property. But I'll take what little bit we can get right now. And he did sign that bill. I, I'm beginning to see a pattern with the governor that if he can take a bill and find a way to put a germane anti-gun amendment on it, he's going to do it. Uh-huh. So he'll look for any opportunity he can to uh, to try to ha- earn his Bloomberg bucks. That appears to be the pattern he has started uh, so far. All right. Well, Dave, now listen, I also got to ask you, we have not talked about this guy, Mike Dickinson, on the program all week long. As everybody's been talking about this guy who's running for Congress in Virginia, you know, he's attacking the NRA, he's going after the. This guy's an Internet troll. And we, never, we very specifically didn't talk about him for a reason because I didn't think he was for real. Now, he was on Fox last night. Greta Van Susteren ends up putting him on. As it turns out, he's not running for Congress. He didn't file. Um, so I, I, I want to point out why we weren't talking about this in case you wondered, you know, do we not see the story? Um, any, any thoughts on this, uh, clown, Dave? Um, well, you know, we, we, we blogged about him, uh, earlier in the week. Um, and I have to give hat tips to, uh, bearingarms.com because they linked to it and, um, shall not be questioned linked to it. And, um, you know, he, 
the seventh district has a habit of pulling these gadflies out of the woodwork. <laughs> uh, it's Eric Cantor's district. Right. It, it used to be described by Michael Barone as the most Republican district in the country. Now it's changed a little bit because Western Henrico has had so many daggone Yankees moving into that <laughs> that part of the county that it had that section of the county hasn't gone Republican in a statewide election with the exception of 2009 in, in, in a number of years. Um, the district's changed a little bit, but it's still a very Republican district. So, you know, Cantor raises gobs of money, and the Democrats put up these sacrificial lambs, and or you get somebody like his Michael Dickerson, Dickinson in there. Um, it was my understanding that you know, because the seventh district committee was going to determine whether they had the Democratic committee was going to determine whether they put a candidate up or not, he was out there actively talking up, and he actually appeared at a Democratic committee meeting in Spotsylvania County, which is in the district, back in February, and he got grilled uh, pretty strongly by some folks there because he made some disparaging comments about some Chesterfield County women that weren't real happy with his. Uh, proposed candidacy, and um, he, I think he was seeking attention, and he definitely got it because the Internet just blew up with his comments. Um, and so if he was looking for, for attention, he was successful in doing that. Uh, he's made disparaging comments about Fox News before. I'm actually surprised they even had him on last night, but, you know, that's Greta, so. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, he, I, yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing, you know, you Sometimes you feed the trolls when you shouldn't. Uh, but uh, I- interesting that uh, this guy, as you say, appears to be a gadfly looking for attention, and he got some. He he definitely got it. Uh, you know, the guy running, the Republican running against Cantor would probably love to have that kind of publicity, not the type that Dickinson put out there, but would love to probably have the attention that Dickinson had for the last couple of days. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> All right, Dave, thank you so much for joining us, sir. It's good talking to you, and we'll see you in Indianapolis. All right, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks a lot, Cam. Me too. Dave Adams, Legislative Affairs Director for the Virginia Shooting Sports Association.